Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Crime doesn't pay. That's what they tell you in school. So increasingly there's evidence that maybe it does in fact pay. Consider all those career politicians who somehow wind up rich in the end. And then there's Omar Kadar. If Kadar lived on your street, he'd probably be the richest guy in your neighborhood. How did he make his money? Well, first he joined the Taliban. During a firefight with U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan in 2002, Kadar threw a grenade that killed a Delta Force medic named Christopher Spear. For that, he went to Guantanamo Bay. He later pleaded guilty to murder there. Lucky for Kadar, he was born a Canadian citizen. So after being released from Gitmo, he sued the government of Canada for his imprisonment. And here's the remarkable thing. Canada settled with him. This month, Justin Trudeau's government awarded Kadar more than $10 million and issued an official apology for being mean to him. Prime Minister Trudeau later conceded he had not bothered to talk to to Christopher Spears' widow before any of this. Instead, he defended the settlement as a win for human rights. Watch. I can understand Canadians' concerns uh, about the settlement. Uh, in fact, I, I share those concerns about the money. That's why we settled. The measure of a society, of a just society, is not whether we stand up for people's rights when it's easy or popular to do so. It's whether we recognize rights when it's difficult, when it's unpopular. Michelle Rempel is a member of the Canadian Parliament and she joins us tonight. Michelle, thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you for having me. Is this a measure of the justness of Canada's society, do you think? Well, first of all, you know, for your viewers here tonight, I want you to know that most Canadians are absolutely outraged about this. Uh, you know, they're outraged because of the payment itself how the payment happened and the fact that you know the way that it's happened has probably preempted and prevented um Tabitha spear from seizing any of those assets so right. uh, you know uh, assets belonging to the father of this man to Kadar's that's father. correct so you know I, I i think while a lot of your viewers have just seen this statement they should also know that most canadians i think are quite outraged and quite disappointed by the state of affairs. It doesn't seem just. I mean, there are probably a lot of people in Canada, including some who've probably been mistreated legitimately by the Canadian government who could use ten and a half million dollars. How did this guy get it? Well, and the thing to recognize here is this was a settlement. This wasn't any sort of payment that was awarded by a Canadian court. This lawsuit that Mr. Cotter had filed was being litigated, and there was no court ruling, right? This was something that the government decided. And so what was disappointing for me as a legislator and many of my colleagues was that this decision happened after our House of Commons, which is you know, similar to your Congress, yes. rose for the summer. So right now we're not sitting, right? We usually have an opportunity to ask questions like, why did this happen? What was the government's motivation? And that didn't happen. So I think that that's where there's a lot of concern about this particular decision, yes. that it's been made in a bit of a vacuum. And now we're just getting dribs and drabs so of why, what's happened. So why was it made? Why did the Prime you know, Minister that's, do that? That's really a question for him. I think many Canadians would have preferred to have seen this play out in a court of law. The Prime Minister has said that this was done for some sort of, you know, financial reason to save money. But the reality is that this was a decision that was made by his government and not by a court of law. And I think that that's quite confusing and quite outrageous for many, many Canadians. So there's an effort online in Canada to raise money for the family of that's right. Christopher Spear, Tabitha Spear, but also yes. for the other soldier who was, who was gravely that's wounded. That's right, uh, spearkids.ca. I think that the last time I checked, there was oh close to $200,000 that had been raised by the Canadian public. And what you have to understand too, that this is not like a partisan political issue. This is something that people who actually voted for this government are going, I'm not comfortable with this, right? You have to understand that Canada values, you know, the relationship that we have in terms of our men and women in uniform serving shoulder to shoulder with each other. And right. I think that there's a lot of people that are just going, how did this happen and why? And again, that's a question for our prime minister to answer. Why wouldn't he call the widow of Christopher Spear first? Again, you know, I'd, I'd I'm sure that's something that he should answer for, but I know that our former Prime Minister Stephen Harper has reached out to her. Um, I, I can't imagine being her right now and listening to all of this coverage and having to have those wounds reopened. Um, I think that we have to be cognizant about her and her like, compassionate to her and her family 
in the first instance here. And then, you know, to me, that's at the core of Canadian outrage over this. So, I mean, again, as long as we're passing out $10 million checks to people who say they've been wrong, this guy would not even be on the first hundred on that list. So you've got to wonder, was this a way of giving the finger to the United States? I think that this should have played out in a court of law. You know, Mr. Cotter has a appeal to his conviction that's pending in your government. He's had this case in front of the Canadian government. This is a very serious situation all around. You know, there's uh, our Supreme Court has said that his his human rights were violated. To me, as a legislator, I want the judiciary to make a decision on this. Yes. And that's what hasn't happened here. And I, I want to be perfectly clear. I think that's where it's that sense of wrongness is coming from. Right. Just let the king decide over summer vacation. Well, we'll have to see. Michelle Rumpel, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Sergeant Lane Morris was the other soldier we alluded to a minute ago who was wounded in that firefight where Christopher Spear was killed. He'll be joining us tomorrow night for his take on the settlement we were just talking about.